Good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to join you this morning in this very special Value in Health Week from Cumtaf Morganic University Health Board to share with you our collaboration journey with industry in value-based healthcare. My name is Dee Lowry and I have the wonderful position of being Head of Value-Based Healthcare at Cumtaf Morganic. We're very proud at CTM to have Paul Mears as our Chief Executive and with the National CEO, CEO role for value-based healthcare in Wales and to host the fantastic Value in Health team and centre. CTM is committed to embed value-based healthcare across our services and our delivering functions to enable patient-centred care, which effectively and efficiently meets the needs of our population. From all of the sessions this week so far, an overriding theme emerges on the journey to understand and embed value-based healthcare, and that's passion. Passion for our patients and their improved health and lives, and passion for the work we love and being enabled to do the very best we can. Value-based healthcare enables us to align our want and need to do this, However, it is not a journey that can be undertaken in a silo. As we know, clinical teams, data, digital capability and financial analysis play a huge role in our multidisciplinary teams approach. But so do our industry partners and the potential for our data to go beyond improving individual person centred care, clinical benchmarking and improvements to evidencing and informing our procurement and contracting approaches and further, to bring patient outcomes closer to industry so that their research and development can lead to better and more patient need aligned innovation. Today you will hear from each of our project partners and then we will have a discussion panel where we can really get to the how, the bumps and what works in working together collaboratively in developing and implementing value-based healthcare projects. Without further ado, I shall hand to my amazing colleague Esther Price, who is especially passionate about this work and this project and our brilliant Head of Procurement and PTP. Over to you, Esther. Thank you, Dee. Um, hi, I'm Esther Price. I'm the Head of Procurement in CUMTAF. Um, I think my passion for value-based healthcare began in earnest two years ago um, when my 21-year-old twin daughter uh, got diagnosed with ARVC, a rare heart condition, and got fitted with a DFib. So as a procurement professional, uh, I wanted to understand how I could add value in the value-based healthcare space, and particularly in the heart failure pathway. Next slide, please. Thank you. So I'm just going to give you a five minute overview um, as to the journey to date, uh, which is shown here in summary. A journey of discovery, um, as you can see the passion I've just described, indeed described earlier, uh, working with people, um, putting patients first. And apologies, my voice, I've got a slight cold, so bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. Next slide. Thank you. The journey began in earnest November, December 2019, um, working with James Griffiths in the value based uh, procurement space. Um, and within CUMTAF, we have three integrated locality groups Royal Morgan, Prince Charles, and Princess of Wales. Um, but early engagement with key stakeholders was critical. Um, key to this were the cardiologists within the heart failure pathway, uh, Rob Leesdale, Aaron Wong, Gethin Ellis and Justin Taylor. And it was key that we engaged with them to scope and progress this across CUMTAF. The clinical leads highlighted several reports to help better understand the context, the issues and the potential, helping us to see the bigger picture. Reports as highlighted below. So would you mind moving on to the next slide, which I think just highlights the bigger picture, not just heads down, it's up spanning what's going on. So next slide, please. Um, so we started to map the pathway in um, up until January 2020. Key as mentioned earlier was the engagement with clinicians and the challenges around value-based procurement in particular rather than just price product or service. But engagement helped build relationships, um, the trust and the partnerships as well. So would you mind moving on to the next slide? Thank you. As well as working um, with the health board, we worked with the National Value and Health team, and it also meant we wanted to understand how procurement might work to support the value-based healthcare approach using the following framework the three P's model. So it's product, process and patient. Product and process are areas where procurement already have an add value, but we wanted to explore how we could really put patient outcomes at the centre of the contracting process, working with industry to share risk and think differently. Next slide. 
Thank you. Bear with me. Um, so basically, um, a critical point was in January 2020, where, um, as I said, working with Adele Carhill in Value and Health Space, that we actually met with the Chief Executive, Director of Finance and the Value Based Healthcare Executive Lead in the Health Board to actually present the findings to date and get buy in that value based procurement was interdependent within the value based healthcare space. And it was key that we were seen as a key partner then in this space as it progressed. But then, as we all know, in February 2020, we were all hit by the pandemic. Um, but that's another story for another time from a procurement perspective. So the journey began as we came out of, or continued, sorry, as we came out of um, phase one of the pandemic. Um, and we, there was a value-based healthcare local project established with income TAF in heart failure, where we had um, an SRO being Neil Hawkes, who led from a clinical perspective. We had executive buy-in and Adele Carhill then had an advisory role on the outcome selection. Uh, collection and the value-based healthcare principles. We had the cardiologists and heart failure nurses within that group and value-based procurement was seen as a key enabler um, and to take things forward. Next slide please. So really um, coming back to sort of the um, pathway mapping and where we got to the initial discovery phase uh, working with James and the Valorin Health team, we felt initially we would do the analysis, look at where we could engage with industry and where potentially opportunities were for a value based procurement opportunity. But then, given what happens in the pandemic, the Life Sciences Hub became a critical partner and enabler with this. And we started having dialogues with, with um, uh, Jonathan and Dee in her role in the Life Sciences Hub as we came out of wave two, because wave two COVID happened um, just in the early stages of 2021. This gave us the opportunity then to have the discussions with Roche and Digifarm about what potentially we could do in this area. And then th that enabled us to have further discussions back into the heart failure group and look at what was being proposed on the table. So basically, um, the initial proposal was around the treatment using NT Pro BNP, but given discussions with the clinicians, they felt the greatest need was in the diagnostic phase. So subsequently, further discussions happened and we really added value then to actually decide on what the aims and the objectives of the project would be. So really looking at the objectives at the, the bottom end of this slide, we wanted to increase the rate of heart failure diagnosis and early interventions at a lower or equal cost to the system, decrease inappropriate echocardiograms and unwanted variation through the pathway. Definitely, you know, passion for all of us involved in this project is improving patient outcomes. But really the, the key difference was innovative contract management using a platform to link payment to the pre-agreed outcomes that we, we want to improve for the patients within the diagnostic phase. And, and it was we presented this to the Improvement and Innovation Board on the 15th, and June, 15th of June, and it was accepted that then we would commence on the project. So that's me. I will now hand over to my colleague in the Life Sciences Hub, Jonathan Morgan, who's the Value Based Healthcare Programme Manager. Thank you, Esther, and uh, good morning, everyone. And like Esther said, so my name is Jonathan Morgan. I'm a Value Based Healthcare Project Lead at Life Sciences Hub Wales. And, you know, Life Sciences Wales have been proud to be part of this project very much from the early stages. And, and to kind of give you some context from, from how we've kind of um, how this project has gone for us and kind of from our perspective. So just to kind of give you some background, so Life, Sci Life Sciences Hub Wales are an arm's length body of Welsh Government and, and we primarily exist to kind of catalyse innovation and collaboration between industry, health and social care and academia in Wales. And, and as you can see on the screen, our mission is is really um, kind of to embed that innovation, innovation within um, the Welsh uh, health and care ecosystem, but essentially to make that positive difference to people, families and businesses across the nation and, and improve those health outcomes. 
Now, our involvement with Valley Base Healthcare kind of started in 2020 um, and it followed um, from a, our commi a commitment from Life Sciences of Wales to kind of really focus on Valley Base Healthcare, um, but more so on working with industry to, to understand the input that they could bring to Wales for the Valley Base Healthcare journey um, and how we could start to really get to the bottom of what those value driven projects would look like. Now, Underneath that uh, that value based healthcare in, um, impact area, we worked quite closely with the National Value and Health team last year, about a year ago now, to to kind of um, be part of the 2020 Value and Health Week, which was an amazing week. We also host um, a quarterly value based healthcare special interest group for industry, which um, with a role of bringing industry together and with speakers from health and the value based healthcare ecosystem in Wales to really get to the bottom of what the challenges are and the opportunities are for driving value based healthcare forward from an industry um, collaborative point of view. And then we also kind of support with some of those value propositions that come from industry and, and what those opportunity and are and how we can develop those by convening the key stakeholders in Wales um, to bring those projects to life. And that kind of brings us to this project really. Now, when we met Digifarm last year in around August um, 2020, I think we really knew straight away that, that this, this kind of Welsh um, based SME had something really special in their solution. Um, and they were really kind of a, um, a missing piece of the puzzle for us in Wales that would really help us develop um, the learning around value based procurement. Um, and we really wanted to work really quite hard and worked in collaboration with them to kind of be able to demonstrate the value of that solution. Um, so we worked with Digifarm and, and then in turn Roche as well to, to kind of understand what the conditions needed to be and who the partners would be to, to kind of really bring up a, a project to life so that that solution could really demonstrate um, its value to the system in, in kind of supporting the value based procurement development journey um, across the, the, the health uh, care system. So we kind of utilised our networks and, and, and we, our engagement channels with health to kind of highlight this opportunity, bring it to the table and, and kind of what really started was these open discussions, really transparent discussions. And, and, and this led us to, to Esther and James, as, as Esther kind of said earlier on, um, where we were kind of on similar paths, just in parallel. It was these open discussions which led us to this exploratory kind of um, phase of, of what could be. And, and I think it's this openness between all the partners that has been the, the, the real key strong element to this project, which has kind of pulled us all together and has meant that it can really drive forward and really kind of bring this project to life. And to be honest, we've never looked back. You know, this has been a, a standout project for us and, and an exemplar project for us. And I think it's this great example of open, collaborative, flexible working. And all the partners have been massively flexible and worked in an agile way during a really difficult period as well. And I think it's that for us which really shows and demonstrates why we're doing this as an organisation to bring all the partners together at the right time around the right problems. So um, I'll stop there and I'm going to I'm going to hand over to um, Ahmed from Digifarm to kind of give their perspective of, of, of the, the project and, and the journey so far. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, thanks for the great introduction uh, and good morning to everyone who's joined. Um, so I'm Ahmed Abdullah, uh, founder and CEO of Digifarm. Um, at Digifarm, we're a fully independent third party uh, organization that's really working on digitizing and scaling value-based reinvestment processes. Um, we're an uh, exclusive implementation partner for iCharm uh, in the UK as well. Um, if we could go to the first slide, please. So when we're talking about value-based healthcare and, and we're, we're bringing many ideas together from you know, cl uh, clinical, uh, clinical representatives, uh, pharmaceutical representatives and things like this, and we're, we're trying to move to a, a sustainable health, health economy, um, we've really seen the transition to value-based reimbursement has, has been quite slow. And that's often been due to uh, an absence of, of a dedicated system to help implement these types of agreements. Um, the requirement for trust between uh, contracting parties and, and, and industry partners um, to uh, work together in this way. Um, the lack of synchronized understanding of data as it's being generated within the health economy, uh, the administrative burden of really linking some of these performance data points to contract con contracting conditions and the associated costs. 
And really, when you bring that together, you, you we've had huge limitations in limiting some of these performance based agreements to simple outcomes, really because of the complexity and cost associated with that. Um, so if we can move to the next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> so to, to address this at Digifarm, we've developed the, the reimburse platform. Um, so this is a, a, a fully automated solution that helps connect all these contracting parties via an immutable data sharing system, uh, also known as distributed ledgers or, or blockchains. And this makes sure once the data is collected uh, from the health systems that it's shared with all the contracting parties while also being protected from any uh, manipulation or editing of the data without the permission of the rest of the peers on the contract. And then we also utilize things like smart contracting to remove the administrative burden of, of processing these types of agreements. Um, this is a system that can really help accelerate access um, and, and widen access as it enables risk sharing and outcomes based agreements that really help protect budgets for healthcare payers and providers. Um, it's a system that enables uh, validation throughout the data collection lifecycle and is able to provide things like reminders to clinicians or healthcare professionals to report data more completely at the required intervals. Um, and what's really interesting about the system is that the data, for example, like we would generate in this project can then be used to um, uh, set up some real world evidence studies. And our system is applicable to many areas uh, across healthcare, such as pharmaceuticals, devices, diagnostics, like the project in, in, in this case, which is a really unique and innovative application. Um, and then areas like uh, healthcare services and digital therapeutics as well. Um, if you move to the next slide, please. So in terms of, of this project and where it will take, uh, uh, you know, the NHS in Wales and, and within its collaboration with Roche, it's really going to enable uh, the local health economy to, to shift to a value based approach uh, where risk sharing agreements and performance based agreements can be uh, conducted for any type of health technology or service, as long as there is some performance threshold that we can track and measure against. Um, when entering these risk sharing partnerships, um, the NHS in Wales can now afford to protect this budget while providing optimal basket of therapies, which I think is really, really exciting for patients here locally. Um, we'll have the ability to collect uh, and, and analyze clinical, financial and operational data to really try and understand how best to optimize spending and procurement within the health economy in Wales and really move that forward. Uh, and in addition to that, you know, what's really huge is obviously providing the best available therapies for patients and the best available services. And without these types of projects and collaborations, this would really be impossible. And that's what we're really here to help facilitate, to try and get the best outcomes for the lowest possible costs. Thank you. I'll just pass it on to uh, Oberfemi from Rush. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ahmed, and good morning, everybody, and welcome to our session. So thank you very much. My name is Obafemi Shikoya. I'm a digital healthcare consultant at Roche Healthcare, at Roche Diagnostics, at Roche Healthcare Consulting. I'm just going to briefly talk to everybody about our value-based healthcare and value-based procurement strategy at Roche Diagnostics and our approach to, to this agenda in this wonderful and exciting area. Next click, please. So um, actually, Gareth, would you just click a couple of times through because uh, this is quite a busy slide and um, thank you. That's great. I'm not going to uh, go through all of it, but I'm going to start towards the right. So in terms of our strategy and our approach, it's around analyzing the situation. So making sure we have a very good understanding of the initial situation. So what is it that the partners we're seeking to work with are trying to address um, and then find the opportunities for improvement, but also looking at a uh, an approach of collaboration, co-creation and co-production and making sure that we are um, developing appropriate measurements and indicators to see how we progress. We then move on to the stage of implementing the solution. So what does the solution development look like? And once again, this is a co-created and co-produced effort and it's bounded by or, or making sure that's with a, an approach towards continuous improvement. And not only are there learnings for all of the stakeholders, but also supporting the education and training that might be required for 
healthcare professionals. We're going to move on to sort of measuring the results, and Esther talked about the um, different uh, integrated locality groups across Kuntaf uh, Morganid. And so, what does the benchmarking look like? And it might be slightly different for each of the different integrated locality group groups. So, we need to create a benchmark so we know where we're starting from, so we can measure how we're improving towards our North Star, um, incorporating international standards, uh, ITEM standards, and, uh, and others as appropriate or necessary. What we're looking at is making sure that we assess the impact and, and the outcomes and the outcomes measurement in line with what we want to achieve. So it's around a, a, a journey and a, and a partnership journey. Next click, please. Thank you. Once again, this is a, another slightly busy slide, and I'm just going to talk you through our approach within Roche Healthcare Consulting towards value-based healthcare and value-based procurement. And I'd like to stress at this point that we do look at this very much as value-based healthcare and value-based procurement as being two pedals of a, of a bicycle, if you like, in terms of moving forward and going forward. So uh, overall, what we look at in terms of the, the model is the SAVE model that we use, which is uh, the S is for, for size. So what is the size of the challenge? What's the sort of uh, resources and, and stakeholders we need to bring to it to address that and make sure we're looking at the, the right thing at the right time and the right priority? Step two is around alignment. So how do we make sure that we are engaging with all the key stakeholders and the stakeholder organizations and make sure that we're aligned on a shared purpose so everyone's clear and transparent about what, what, what they're looking to gain and what the objectives are and how we can all swarm to that purpose. Step three is looking at the, the value and this is around surfacing what is of value throughout the pathway and how we bring that value to, to bear. And this um, very much aligns with the, the four pillars of person value, allocative value, societal and technical value, but also the, the IHI or IHA related quadruple aims so around improved population health and well-being, um, improved quality of care for patients, reduced costs per capita for the in terms of delivering the care, but also around improved workforce experience, and that's really important to us as well. And then the final step, the final stage is around the actual execution. So I mentioned change management before. One of the key challenges is around how we help and support the uh, workforce and the systems to, to move to different ways of working to, to surface and, and understand and, and gain this benefit in terms of value. Next slide, please. So just to finalise then, Starting at the bottom of this uh, sort of diagram, it's it's around a trusted partnership, and it's it's many other speakers have alluded and mentioned that in terms of how we are going to work and and co-create these solutions and collaborate together. And it's around end-to-end -end solutions. So we recognise as an organisation that uh, we are not going to be the only industry partners within this. So it's around coming together and collaborating with the healthcare sector, the system, organisations like Life Sciences Health Wales but also with other industry partners as well to, to service this value and, and drive the, the benefits and outcomes that we're all looking for. And once again, just to finalise, so we look at this in terms of uh, collaboration, co-creation, co-production, all the way through the journey. And thank you very much. How do you go over to Dee? Dee, thank you very much. OK, so, um... Thank you everybody um, for those great presentations. We um, recognise that was a whistle stop tour, so um, we have a, a number of invitations for you. The first one is to get in contact with us at any time. Um, if you'd like to find out more about any of our partners, about the Digifarm platform, about our approach in CTM, um, please do get in contact. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to host a little bit of a discussion panel where we can dig down to, to some of the, the meaty elements on the reality of driving this forward. Um, and as I said earlier, some of the bumps. Um, so we, we've got enough time to do that and then to take some questions from you guys, which um, if you are if you put into your FAQ side, um, then Sally will kind of be picking those up and putting those forward for us and um, our panel will be ready to take those for you. So I'm going to I'm going to kick off um, because what's great about Value in Health Week is we learn all about um, the projects that people have been doing, we learn how proms and prems are uh, being able to demonstrate and evidence that work. Um, but there are challenges on the way. So we wanted to use our session to, to share some of those challenges from our partners to really get underneath that a little bit, um, because the, none of this work just happens. It doesn't just happen. It takes time. It takes passion. It takes commitment. Um, it takes drive. Sometimes it takes a lot of coffee. 
Um, but but there really is more to it than you know just bringing different systems together. So Esther, what have been some of your key challenges um, back at CTM? Thanks, Dee. Um, thank you. Um, I think it's uh, the biggest challenge has been uh, doing things differently. You're actually um, going forward sometimes, not knowing where you're going. And I think as a group, we've been having those open and honest discussions about what are we actually trying to achieve here and, and actually those challenging yourself that maybe you need to think differently as well. So I think those are the biggest challenges, not only with us as a group, but with the, you know, the clinical staff internally, the, the, the initial discussion around value based procurement was, well, we just buy things and we just buy products and services what you actually mean. So it's sort of those roadblocks sometimes you 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 come up against. It's sort of exploring and discussing and being open and honest with one another, not only within the health board, but within us as a group. So we actually come then with a co collaborative solution because we've challenged each other about what we need to do. So I think that's that's been the biggest challenge, positive and I wouldn't say negative because it's all been positive, really, even though we've had quite difficult conversations as a group. So I think that's what um, I think I'd like to share with everyone today. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. And and shock. So back at Roche, um, you know, the, it's a, a multinational organisation. They've taken the decision to, to convene a value based healthcare team. Um, what have been some of the challenges? Um, obviously, you've linked in with John. Um, through the Life Science Hub Wales. What have been some of the challenges in getting your approach and getting through the door to health to um, actually drive and work in partnership on some of these projects? Well, that's a, a great question, Dean, so thanks very much. Uh, I, I think one of our key areas of challenge has been around alignment of key stakeholders. So that is both external and, and internal, actually, to be, to be, to be honest. I'll, I'll take the external bit first and, and then come back to the internal. So it's around making sure that we're aligned on these ultimate goals. What, what is it we're trying to achieve? What's in scope? What's out of scope? We're not going to try and bore the ocean in one day type of, of approach. And, and clarity of purpose, but also a common language for, for that transparency and, and then building the trust and the openness. And that's been a really positive journey. And I'll take the internal aspects as well. So there have been things that we need to do and are required internally to make sure that we are able to be successful externally now i'll just take an example of making sure that we've got the uh, legal team and the legal and governance team on board for instance in the development of the joint working agreement for instance and making sure that we can put all the things in place that are required because one of the key outcomes is what does a good model of value-based procurement contracting look like and that's one of the, the kind of key outcomes we want to achieve so overall i think that that you know those have been the sort of key challenges, but as Esther said, they've been very sort of positive and we're sort of leaning into those as those, those challenges and seeing those as ways in which we can develop and develop the learning. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Shock. And I'm, I'm just going to pull through one of the questions here that we've had through um, in relation to trust, because we've spoken about passion, we've spoken about trust and there can be distrust between um, industry and health and a lack of transparency and a lack of openness. Um, and we've we've spoken a lot about this in our project and how do we overcome it? So I'm going to come next to Ahmed and then to um, Jonathan just to talk about how we've built on some of that um, trust. Um, I have to say, from my point of view, in transitioning from the life science of Wales over to CTM um, and working on both sides with this project, that actually learning together um, through the project, but also through the Value Based Healthcare Academy course, which is for industry and for health has been absolutely inspiring and helps to break down some of those walls. So um, Ahmed, I'd love to hear your view on how we've broken down some of this elements of trust and, and really built up this partnership. Yeah, so no, thank you. That's a great question, Dee. Um, well, in my, I, can, I can give you my opinion, which I think is, is hopefully will be quite interesting. Uh, with my background as a health economist, I've been part of more than 80 submissions uh, to payers uh, from manufacturers um, in the last five years. Um, and during that process, there's always a, a very, very intense negotiation, let's call it, uh, around how well this drug would work or 
how 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 you know what what price level it should be at and typically often this process is you know 12 to 18 months a lot of data sharing a lot of arguing around data points and things like this um, whereas with this type of approach um, it's all about looking at data objectively and no longer subjectively and no longer having this this you know internal conflict between you know these healthcare stakeholders um, and 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 that's really really important um, so what you have when you're paying for performance is that um, obviously there are different implications when when you know uh, performance is bad or when performance is good and obviously this has some you know financial and, and commercial impact on on all the stakeholders um, whereas when we're all working together and pre-negotiating and pre-agreeing a, a criteria that is fair for everyone and then using data that's generated from the system objectively um, it essentially eliminates the need for trust and, and puts a trust in, 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 in the logic and in the smart contracts and, and, and relays it back to the data that's generated. Lovely, thank you. And, and John, um, you, you spoke about your work with the Industry Specialist Interest Group um, and how you're uh, working to, to, to bring everyone together, actually. So um, I wondered if you'd like to just give us a, a little bit more on the work you've been doing there and some of the findings on uh, in relation to trust and building these collaborative partnerships. Yeah, thanks, Dee. And, and you know, trust trust is such a, a, a massive kind of value that, that should sit between everything that we do. And I think and what we're unfortunately riding is the wave of historic kind of challenges when it comes to trust. And I think especially when it comes to working with industry and, and, and all those partners. So whether it's clinicians or procurement or industry, historically those those kind of entities have never really come together in certain in, in certain projects or had the chance to get to know each other. So I think they'll always there has there, there's always the chance of a of a distrust with that. But I think what we're trying to do now and, and with projects like this and with the, the industry special interest group is to kind of bring all those entities together in a much open kind of transparent way um, and what you don't know you don't know so in doing what we're doing by giving people the kind of time the air time the, the opportunity to talk and, and give perspectives is really kind of driving that trust and and you know the special the special interest group that we host at life sciences hub wales is allowing industry to do that on a collective platform and I think where we are able to bring some of the, the key kind of leaders from a value based healthcare ecosystem um, from the, the ecosystem within Wales to the table to to kind of hear firsthand from our colleagues across industry about, you know, what are the challenges, but what are the opportunities? And I think it, we keep saying this across this, this this session, but openness and transparency and a willingness to listen is what I think is changing that that um, the element of trust. And I think um, it's that that change or from what I'm seeing, um, and, and that's what's driving us to work more closely and 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 develop and deliver what our meaningful outcomes for for projects and essentially for the population of Wales. Lovely, thank you, John. So um, I'm I'm doing the same here. I'm looking at the questions I've got, and I'm also keeping an eye on the ones that are coming through. So I'm going to blend some of these. So the next one that we were going to talk about was around the processes and attitudes that need to be able to flex and change around being able to take this work further and scale up. Um, one of the questions that's come in is around um, there was talk about blockchain as a technology to deliver smart contracts and agreements, and what are the present challenges for scaling up. The use of this technology. So um, I'm going to pass to Esther first um, and then if we go to Ahmed again, so Esther can talk about the internal challenges across the health board and, and that health ecosystem um, and Ahmed can then talk about around the, the challenges of um, scale up and there is also a, um, a further question um, around um, how is this scaling up further across Wales, um, beyond Wales as well. Um, so there's a number of opportunities here so um, over to Esther and then Esther if you can hand to Ahmed for me. Yeah, will do. Thanks, Dee. Thank you. Um, can I just follow on from the last question or just briefly, any relationship is built on trust. And I think just to let everyone know, as all parties involved here have challenged each other about what's in it for us. 
and what do we want out of it? But more importantly, where are the improvements for patients? So I'll just finish on that, sorry, because I want to just pop in on that question. But back to your original question there, Dee, in relation to processes. I think um, back to, you know, being the head of procurement, value-based procurement, what is it? Um, I think one of the challenges about the processes, how do we um, flex and change the current procurement processes that we have to actually work within this space because uh, coming from a commercial background and coming into the public sector, potentially the, the process can be seen as a constraint. So we do need to sort of challenge ourselves and we're not quite there yet in relation to well, what does this actually mean when we will get to what we think will be a model contract where we're actually paying on outcomes in a sustainable way to improve patient outcomes. You know, what, what actually does that mean then for the process and how is that scalable? And we also have to be mindful of the green paper and the procurement reforms and flexible options within that. And how does that fit with that? Um, I think that answers maybe your question in relation to the process. Um, and I think from a scalable perspective, you know, certainly we want to do this with income TAF. Um, and potentially then it could be scaled into other areas. Um, we need to see if this works, which we all passionately believe that it will. Um, but then I'll pass that over to, to Ahmed so he can talk about the scalable. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Esther. Um, so, yeah, in terms of, of, of the technology, um, to be honest, in, in terms of the technology, uh, the throughputs and, and how it will perform, um, we don't really have too many concerns about that. I think, to be honest, the rate limiting step uh, for this is, 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 is how fast these uh, agreements are made and how fast data is collected and the formats that we receive this data in and, and you know, and, and how much uh, cleaning of this data we need to do. Um, Right now, there are uh, you know blockchain platforms that provide uh, the ability to add legal pros to some of these smart contracts as well to add additional protection for uh, some of these uh, contracting uh, parties. So, to be honest, we don't really have too many concerns with 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 the scaling of the technology, and um, you know in regards to um, expanding some of our work on. Uh, to to other regions or jurisdictions, I think that's what's really exciting about this project here uh, in Wales. Um, it's one of the first ones, or probably the first one that I know that's that's for a diagnostic test like this. Uh, some of the key learnings that we uh, will be generating will be very very informative for the rest of the world and the rest of the value-based healthcare ecosystem. And um, I think it really uh, kickstart a, a revolution in how value-based contracting will actually be looked at at the practical level. No longer uh, just look, looking at simple outcomes related to uh, drugs or devices, but actually understanding um, how to connect the world of procurement, health economics, uh, financing and, and, and uh, patient outcomes as well. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Um, so just picking up on the side, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, Karen's picked up uh, two elements here. So the first one I want to pick up on um, was whether the biochemists are involved. So I think, as I said in my introduction, um, I might have rounded CTM, but it, it, it takes an entire village to make value based healthcare happen. And our biochemists are absolutely integral to our work. They're gathering the data um, of the elements through secondary care, working with primary care. Um, everybody's involved in this. We've we've held two workshops which were completely multidisciplinary and they weren't just informing workshops. These were, this is what we want to make happen. How do we get this moving? Who who can get the data? Who can get involved? And how is everybody, literally the village, going to going to going to drive this work forward? So absolutely on the first point. Um, the second one then was in relation to the measurable outcomes. And is it too early? We're taking the approach that as Amma said, this, this is new in this area in, in linking the data to procurement and, and how that actually can lead to um, contracting. We're taking all the lessons as we move. We're hoping as part of today to be able to share that. Um, you know, the, the diagnostic drug has, has already been proven to work and there will actually be a session on that tomorrow um, from Swansea. 
Um, we want to be able to see how we can take that one step further to inform, as, as we said, that procurement journey. Um, and, and we've literally got a few minutes left. So just picking up on that trust element just, just one more time, because it is so important and it, and it has been seen as a, a key barrier, a challenge. Um, and actually Adele Carhill's next session on strategic partnerships will really help um, people that participate in that session to, to understand and unpick some of this. But there is a recognition in industry that there, there needs to be a change, that we can't keep doing transactional, that we need to be thinking wider about the personal value, the technical value, and even the societal value. If, if, if a product costs slightly more, but is recyclable, then we need to be considering that for our NHS Greener strategy. But industry need to know what we want to know and what we need in the future. Um, so from what we found, they're definitely keen to be working in this tran transformational space. But I'm going to throw it back out to, I'm going to go to shock first and then Ahmed. So why is there an interest from industry in value-based healthcare approaches? And, and what's in it for you guys? Thanks very much, Dee. And I think it's a very pertinent question. Uh, so I think for, from an industry perspective, we, we recognise that we don't know anything and, and, and that we want to work with and collaborate with partners across the whole system to, to derive this value for, for, for patients. And for, for us in industry, it's very much around learning how we need to, to partner going forward. So that's partnership around the value-based procurement agenda. What does good contracting on outcomes look like? And how do we work with, with the system to kind of share the risk around what we're doing that's innovative? And that the, in order to bring in innovative, innovative ways of addressing the diagnostics pathway, this is a journey that we, we, we need to go on and that it takes time and, and to, to work with those willing partners is, is absolutely key. I just wanted to quickly raise that other aspect as in the diversity aspect in terms of all of the different players. So one of the things we are looking at is not just the biochemists, it's the admin staff, it's the, the data collection staff, et cetera, which is why it's so useful and attractive to be working with a, another independent partner like Digifarm, who will be the custodians of the, the data and, and what what we're able to then use to, to drive the improvements, because it's about the continuous improvement. That's where we're going to get the value. It's a, a wicked problem, takes many stakeholders, and it takes a commitment to the journey. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Ahmed, I, mean, I wonder if you could just pick up one last question. We've literally got a couple of minutes, so we will provide written answers to these questions as well. Um, but in, in this industry side, um, you know, often health think industry just want our data. Right, and they want patient data. So, how do how how can it be assured that patient data is treated uh, is treated in a GDPR compliant manner, um, so that it's not just looked at that industry just want the data? Yeah, I mean, for example, in relation to to this example, um, we don't need to know the identity of the patient to to uh, ascertain whether something is performing well or not. Essentially. Um, we used uh, anonymized data extracts to, and then process those and then provide them back to, to the stakeholders who are then able to identify or, or link them back to these patients if required. But typically, um, this is just uh, essentially an output we would provide is essentially an alert or an invoice uh, to all these contracting parties based on, on the outcomes data that we have generated. And in terms of, uh, you know, what we would obviously get out of uh, a, cl a collaboration like this is most importantly for us is, is understanding um, how to configure and customize our system for these types of, uh, you know, implementations uh, and then taking that forward and, and, and seeing where we can provide value uh, to, to, to other healthcare stakeholders as we move forward. Thank you, Ahmed. So we're literally a minute away, but a last question has come through. Um, so many contract tenders are decided mainly on price. So how can value based projects be considered as an impar important part of the decision processes for tenders to ensure patient outcomes are considered? Um, for me, I think this goes back to how we actually use the data. So, yes, we want the data to, to inform individual person centred care and at population level and service level. But we actually absolutely need to be doing that finalisation of the cycle, as Amos just said, and the anonymised data to actually look at the outcomes of what we're procuring. When it comes to tenders, I think it's also about reaching out and having a really clear, clear understanding of the outcomes that we want to be achieved. And then the different forms, as Esther's um, discussed, the different forms of procurement, risk-based shared procurement, outcome measured performance, 
to actually inform that contract and payment um, in moving forward. Um, so I, I would just like to thank everybody. Um, as I said, we'll provide some more written answers. So that last question, I'll get a bit more from Esther on that one. Um, but I wouldn't want you to miss a Dell session, which is all around strategic partnerships. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for joining. Um, please do get in contact with us with any further questions or if you'd like to see the Digifarm platform and how it actually works, um, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Um, thank you to all of our wonderful presenters, as always, very open, very honest, and that's what makes it such a great partnership. So please enjoy the rest of the week and we hope you've enjoyed today's session. Thank you very much.